process. But since you specifically asked about warp, I'm going to kind of jump forward. Okay, sure. I'm going to jump forward on the, the discussion thread. Um, we don't have to. We can use it as a teaser. Okay. Uh, well, f- let's do, let's use that as a teaser. Okay, let's let's, let's back teaser. up then. Okay, let's and back. Uh, so I, I you know I, I provided a um, a video that we pulled together um, uh, called "Go Incredibly Fast." Uh, I did it with a, a, a Swedish uh, digital artist, uh, Eric Orenquist. He's done a bunch of wonderful videos for NASA um, and a bunch of uh, other friends. But this this video um, kind of encapsulates. Uh, the challenge of time and distance in space, right? If you want to send human beings past Mars and the solar system, that sets up a problem statement, right, that uh, changes the nature of the types of technologies that you might think about bringing to bear to, to solve the problem. And so this video tells us uh, what's, what are some things that we can do to solve this problem, uh, spanning from things that we kind of know to things that we kind of don't know in terms of both physics and engineering. And okay. so this video is kind of a uh, an emotional encapsulation of a highly technical story. So let's watch this. It would be a great way to kind of uh, tee off this discussion. The sky calls to us. We do not destroy ourselves. We are one day venture to the stars. Carl Sagan. <laughs> As incredible as it may seem, there will be a time, and it may be closer than you think, when we live on other worlds. The moon, Mars, and in the space between. And when that day comes, just as always, our children will look with curiosity across these new horizons with a desire to go further and to explore what lies beyond. But beyond Mars, the distances between worlds grow immensely, even within our own solar system, and become truly vast in between stars. If we ever want to reach out across these distances, we need to learn how to go fast. Nuclear electric propulsion. (laughs) Here we go. Yeah, so this is what we know. Using our current knowledge of physics and engineering, we could build nuclear locomotives to take humans to all the worlds in our solar system. But a starship powered with a nuclear heart aimed for even our closest star, Proxima Centauri, would have to harbor hundreds of generations of people, all living their entire lives aboard before reaching its destination four and a quarter light years away. It would take two years just to reach the orbit of Saturn and another 2,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri. We need to be able to go faster. Fusion propulsion. (laughs) We should re-record this with you doing that for each other. (laughs) Our current (laughs) knowledge of physics. But with engineering we have yet to develop, We can imagine a propulsion system with the sun for a heart, a fusion engine that could accelerate a starship up to 5% of the speed of light. This ship could cross the orbit of Saturn in six months and reach Proxima Centauri in just over a century. But if we want to traverse interstellar distances in less than a human lifetime, we have to go incredibly fast. The universe has shown us that this can be done by altering the scale of space itself. And we are working to develop new understandings of physics to learn how this might be controlled. If we could construct a starship with a propulsion system that decreases space in front of it and expands space behind it, this ship could cross enormous distances effectively faster than the speed of light. Such a ship would reach from Mars to Saturn in just a matter of minutes and be able to reach Proxima Centauri in less than six months. Whoa. 
from there, there are no limits to where we could go. Perhaps one day, humanity will look up at an alien night sky and strain to find the pale yellow dot that is our sun, our home, and know for the first time, as we look back on ourselves, that we are not alone in the universe. This journey starts today. Whoa. First of all, whoever did the graphics Thanks, for Jamie. that. Yeah, Eric Ornquist uh, was the, the Swedish digital artist that we used to develop that uh, that video. Um, and so uh, well, that guy nailed it. Oh my gosh, didn't that's he? pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, we had uh, we had a like a, a three swim lane chart, if you will. That's a 